So if you hear some noise while I'm cooking, here's my kitchen partner right now. Smile kitchen partner. Making some sugar cookies. Let me take you on a quick little tour while I got my camera down. Here's our Christmas tree. If you join me on live one time, I took you on a little tour of my house. It's a mess, I've been working in here, but there's our tree. We're really big on lights. <laughs> we put a lot of lights on and lots of ornaments. I have a lot of my grandma's ornaments. My parents always gave us an ornament every year, so um, lots of history in these ornaments. These aren't just picked up at the at the dollar store, so there's nothing wrong with that, but most of these are sort of family heirlooms. Let's see, I don't think I have lights on in here. We've got this one. Look at the messy kitchen. Look at the setup. You don't have to see all that messy stuff. This tree was my grandma's. I know these came back into popularity a couple of years ago. We have this big one from her. Oh, sorry. This was my grandma had one and hers was smaller. I think my brother has it. This was my husband's grandmother's actually. We've got very importantly, Buddy the Elf over here. So my parents owned a flower shop way back when I was, before I was even born, when I was a baby. And so we have some of these neat things like this that um, would have had a flower arrangement in them. He's got a little sack back there. We put candy canes in them. In him now. Here's my mantle. He's not lit up. I went really simple with the mantle this year. And I like it. I like it a lot. The one thing to show you. Oh, we have... So this was one of my parents' nativities. This one here. Oh, we've got one upstairs that was my husband's grandmother's. This one was the kids. So they always would set up. My daughter still puts that one out. And then we just, so my parents prepared to downsize someday. They gave me this one that my dad started when he was very young. It has all these pieces and it has a little light back there when we plug it in. But it's quite old and he took very good care of it. Let's see if I can show you these. Oh, we got a reflection. That's making it kind of hard, but can you see the the little look on those faces? Oh, that's even worse. That's one of my favorites. Okay, let's get down to business. All right, hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth Hines from Our Paleo Family and the Autoimmune Free Cooking Club. And I'm back with another holiday treat today. We're making um, a recipe that's been in my family for many, many, many years. My grandma made it, she gave the recipe to my mom. My mom always made it. I turned this into a paleo recipe. So paleo being grain-free, dairy-free, soy free, all legume free, basically you're taking out the refined, ultra refined, inflammatory stuff. The only thing that makes this recipe not quite paleo is we do have some gluten free oats and I have um, used Enjoy Life chocolate chips which are free of the eight major allergens but they do have some cane sugar in them. So. Uh, and that's all unsweetened chocolate and cane sugar. So um, those are pretty pure. Fudge bars are what we're making today, and they are just what they sound. They're a bar cookie that combines fudge. So there's a fudge layer, and there's this yummy, rich, like oatmeal cookie layer. So good. And let me show you how to make them. They're um, a teeny bit more steps, so I kind of prepped a few things ahead of time. You'll find in the description below the recipe so you can make this for yourself. One of the great things about this recipe, well, actually two great things. One, it makes a lot, and two, they last a long time. So make these, oh, and three, they're super rich. So you really just need a small one and that makes a nine by 13 pan. So make these early in the season and you can set them out when people stop by. If you're like us, like anything we have this season, we're having to take a snack. I mean, every second, just like three or four things a week, I'm having to send a holiday goodie. So a dozen of these on a little platter and it's really, fabulous so um so they really go a long way 
So to make the cookie layer first, I have my oven on 350 and I greased my pan and I'm ready to go. So I have a cup of palm shortening in here and then I'm going to add my sugar ingredients. I need my mixer. I do apologize for the ultra messiness of the kitchen, but my daughter was hired to do some baking and so she is in the middle of her cookie baking back here. So I have my palm shortening. Here are my sugars. This is a half a cup of coconut sugar, which would be our paleo version of brown sugar a half a cup of dates, and three tablespoons of molasses. And I blended all that up in my mini food chopper, my little Cuisinart bag here. Uh, so that goes in. I'm going to go ahead and put my eggs in, two large eggs. So just like any kind of cookie recipe, you're going to put your liquid stuff in, blend it up, put your dry stuff in, blend it up. I'm being super optimistic today because I don't have an apron on. I was looking for my Chris's apron and I couldn't find it. So I need two teaspoons of vanilla in this layer. And I'm going to need some vanilla in the fudge layer too. Also two teaspoons. So I'll just set that right over there. So that's my liquid. And let me get that blended together. For blending up the dates with the coconut sugar and the molasses, Sometimes dates are just nice and soft. Um, when they're fresh, they should be soft like that. Um, and then as they age, maybe sit in your cupboard, they get kind of hard. If you need to, if they're so hard, you're not gonna be able to mix them up. Go ahead and pour some hot water over them and let them soak for a few minutes. Um, and then, then you can blend them up. We don't wanna add, introduce a lot of extra liquid to the recipe, but soaking your dates for a couple minutes so that you can actually work with them is not going to cause any kind of problem. Just kind of get this mixed up. I did this ahead of time so it sat there and of course the sugar from the dates and the coconut sugar and the molasses it just formed this super thick sticky paste. So I'm kind of trying to get all that broken up. Once I get my dry stuff in it'll break up even more. So it'll really be fine. Okay so there's that. We need two cups of almond flour and a half a cup of arrowroot. So let me do the arrowroot since it's closer. What are you doing to get ready for Christmas? Are you baking? Are you looking at Christmas lights? Are you visiting? Are you having people over? Do you have like a big Christmas party, open house kind of thing? Tell me what you do to celebrate. What are your what are your family traditions? We always do a lot of baking. I'm actually going to do a little bit less this year. It just has seemed excessive. So I'm going to do a little bit less baking, but we'll still do a lot of baking. We always look at lights. There's a house near us that has the big display that they set to music. And it's awesome. So we'll do that soon. We haven't made it over there yet. Um, Church, of course, on Christmas Eve. So we need a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. And I'll need some salt for the fudge layer. So I'll leave that over there. What are some of our other Christmas traditions, Kate? Um, Christmas Eve, the grandparents come. Oh, yeah. Christmas Eve, we go to church and then we come back here and we have like a snack. Supper. We have a bunch of appetizers, shrimp cocktail, and we love the um, like summer sausage. And I'll do a big vegetable tray with like a ranch dip or something like that. Um, and then we go look at Christmas lights, and we watch a lot of Christmas movies. You know, all the classics. We've been saving It's a Wonderful Life for Christmas Eve, and we'll watch that. Um, of course, we love Elf. It's hilarious. Um, I think this year the kids are not wanting to watch those old cartoons, the Rudolph and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. We've always watched those in the past. Maybe they're feeling a little too old for those this year. We just watched Christmas with the Cranks, which is a Tim Allen. It's really funny. Um, Christmas Story. Did I say White Christmas? That's one of our favorites. Okay, so once you get all that stuff mixed up, then I add the oatmeal. I'm going to need three cups of certified 
gluten-free oats. Of course, oats are gluten-free, but um, the reason why all of them that you buy are not certified gluten-free is because they're just um, processed in facilities with cream of wheat and other grains that are not gluten-free. So if gluten-free is actually really important to you, then you want to get certified gluten-free oats. And while I'm talking about that, let me just explain one thing. So we eat gluten-free to manage our autoimmune disease. And um, this mainly comes up in restaurants, but people ask, only, don't only celiacs really need to be gluten-free? Well, celiac disease is an autoimmune disease that affects the digestive system that researchers, doctors know the way to manage it is to not eat gluten. Well, the fact is, it's just another autoimmune disease, like all the rest. And, and basically, they all work the same way. You're just seeing different symptoms. You know, Hashimoto's is thyroid, psoriatic arthritis. You get arthritis, you get some um, plaques like psoriasis. You know, the disease, autoimmune disease is autoimmune disease. So when I go to a restaurant and I say, you know, I need this to be gluten free, and they say, oh, are you celiac? I say, yes. I'm not celiac, I have Crohn's disease, which is actually very, very similar to um, celiac, but it needs to be treated just the same. If you're trying to manage your autoimmune disease with diet and lifestyle, which is going to have to include being gluten free, then. Um, then yes, you treat it, it's just as important as um, if you had celiac needing to be gluten-free. And restaurant people just don't recognize that, but you know it and you feel confident in answering yes, yes, I'm celiac. I need to manage my disease with a gluten-free diet. Okay, before I put this in, let me tell you what's happening with our fudge over here. Um, because I didn't get my little stove out, I'm just going to do it right here on the counter. So we have this cookie layer, which we make a base out of, and we save some of it, and that goes on top. I'll show you all of that. And then we have the fudge layer. And the fudge layer contains sweetened condensed milk. So to make that paleo, I've used sweetened condensed coconut milk, which you can buy. That is a product that is available I've ordered it from Thrive Market, which is online. I'll link to that. Um, you may be able to find it at natural food stores, Whole Foods, that kind of thing. I'm sure you can buy it online. Um, but it contains cane sugar, I believe. And so I just make my own. So my recipe calls for a, a can of coconut milk. And I've used a ton of them. And this one is always my favorite. And you can buy it at some stores. I, again, order it online from Thrive Market. This is the Unsweetened Organic Coconut Milk Classic by Native Forest. That's my favorite. So a whole can of coconut milk, two tablespoons of maple syrup, and that goes in this pot, and I just boil it. And it takes 45 minutes-ish to get down to a cup, give or take. You know, a little more than a cup, a little less than a cup is fine. But you want about a cup of the sweetened condensed coconut milk. And then you add your 10 ounce bag of chocolate chips, um, two tablespoons of coconut oil, a half a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of maple syrup. And that goes on the stove until it's all melted together. So I'm going to put this on my stove on low, medium, low. And then when it comes off, did I add the salt? I did add the salt. When it comes off, I'm going to add a cup of chopped pecans, which of course you can leave out, but they're really, really good in this recipe. You can use walnuts too, um, but I prefer pecans, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Okay, so you take your 9 by 13 this is this big Pampered Chef casserole, it's slightly bigger than 9 by 13 and you want about two-thirds of your, basically, an oatmeal cookie dough. And we're going to just press that into the bottom. So, clean hands. Is that about right? Let me do a little bit more. So, just a nice, even layer. It's pretty sticky. If you wet your hands, that will help. I'm going to do that. 
Just wet them with cold water, that helps. Just press this out to be approximately even. My dates are old, not old, but I've had them for a couple months, and so they are kind of hard, and my food processor really needs to be replaced. It was having a little bit of a hard time. I did not soak them. I should have soaked them. So I can see a few little, the little, the dark brown in there are the dates, but it doesn't bother me at all. It's going to cook up just fine. Okay, we'll set that to the side. We'll wait for our fudge to be finished. Okay, so that really just took a couple minutes. I um, was stirring this pretty constantly. You see it's this beautiful, thick, shiny, yum, yum, yum. You could um, absolutely at this point pour this into a pan, let it set up, and you would have fudge. Delicious, chocolatey, low sugar fudge. But we're going to put it in our fudge bars today. It's so good. I'm not a big chocolate lover, but this tastes amazing. I love, 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 love this version. Um, so again, if you just want to make fudge, you could stop right here. It melted pretty fast because I had just made my sweetened condensed milk, so my pan was still warm. It had been off of the stove for maybe 30 minutes, but this is a heavy stainless pan. It was still... Um, it was still warm and my condensed milk was warm, but even still that takes, mm, you know, maybe five minutes to make that fudge layer. It will start to set up, so go ahead and just pour that over, spread it out. I feel like I have made this video before, but I searched and I didn't find it, so I guess I did not my husband were home and he were doing the dishes for me, he would be very excited to lick this pan. Not to beat a dead horse or anything, but if you need a dairy-free fudge recipe um, or simply just a fast fudge recipe, if you're not having to stand over the stove and cook your mixture to a certain temperature, and it's totally not fussy fudge recipe. Um, although I did make orange, chocolate orange fudge, which has the, the chocolate layer and then it has a white chocolate layer that's orange flavored. That is amazing. And I just looked for it. I'm 99% certain I have a video for that one. So you can look that one up. We'll link it um, in the little cards above. So you could use a spoon. You could use a little cookie scoop to... Um, get your remaining cookie batter just kind of evenly distributed across the top, but you know, I just like to use my fingers, just the easiest. Just scrape it all down. These are expensive ingredients, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to waste. Sometimes my kids will have friends over and they'll eat dinner with us and they won't, it's like they, I don't know, it's like they're intentionally not eating all their food for some reason and there's all this food left on the plate it's like wow that's grass-fed beef and organic produce it's like all this expensive stuff and they're leaving it on the plate okay let me wash my fingers okay and this is an important part so don't forget this so now we're going to swirl these together so you can take your butter knife or um, this really thin wilton spatula that works really well too but I know everybody doesn't have this. Let me just show you how it works just fine with your butter knife. And first of all, just kind of push it down, kind of like chopping those little blobs up a bit. It'll just make it easier for you in a second. Just kind of push them down. And we're not going to totally mix these together. We, we want somewhat of a layer, but we want them swirled. So then go back and forth. And it's going to get kind of lumped up and they're not going to be even. We'll fix that in a minute. Don't worry. Just kind of run your knife through. And you want to actually get down into that layer in the bottom. 
know this looks like a mess, right? Trust me. Okay, and then now you smooth it out. And now you need to get it to an even thickness all over. And then these go in the oven, 350 for 30 minutes. Okay, in the oven it goes. Well, no, we kind of have to do this, right? When my kids were little, we learned this poem called The Goops. The Goops, they lick their fingers. The Goops, they lick their knives. They spill their broth on the tablecloth. Oh, they lead disgusting lives. So I can't lick my knife because then I would be a goop. I can lick my finger. Okay. In the oven for 30 minutes. Oh, I just realized the beginning of it is the goops, they lick their fingers. And I licked my finger. So I guess I'm a goop. I could have licked my knife too. All right, see you in a few minutes. Hey there, so our fudge bars have baked for 30 minutes, exactly 30 minutes. So they look pretty much when they're baked like they do before they go in. They rise up a little bit, um, so they look a little bit puffy. And you know how like a pumpkin pie is a little bit jiggly in the center when it's done? These might be a teeny bit jiggly in the center, but not a lot. I, I pretty much just bake them for straight up 30 minutes. It's going to be hard to tell if they're burned because they're already dark brown. Um, so make sure your oven is calibrated properly, 350, 30 minutes, and you'll be perfect. Um, so like I said, they puff up a little bit and then that kind of sinks down a little. These have cooled for, like I said, did I say? They've cooled for about 30 minutes and the stoneware keeps them really hot. So they're still a little bit warm to cut, but I need to get on with my day. So I wanna show you um, what these look like. So I'm just gonna run my spatula around the outside. You can do that with a butter knife or a thin, you know, regular knife. And let me cut a little bit of a larger one just so I can get it out cleanly because they're still a little warm. Um, be a little, potentially a little bit messier to get out. Okay, so you can see our oatmeal layer. Mm. I have to lick my fingers. I guess I'm a goop. Let me do it up close. So this is a huge piece. I would serve maybe three people with this piece. Yeah, three. It's really rich and fudgy. You try these, you'll see. Super, super yummy. I'm going to get a clean one. And I'm going to put this back in because I just want them to cool more. Once they're totally cooled, I will um, cut these into squares and store them in one of my little Christmas cookie containers. Um, but again, almost totally paleo. The chocolate chips have cane sugar and oatmeal. It is a gluten-free grain if you buy gluten-free oatmeal that is generally very well tolerated by most people. If you're at the beginning stages of a healing process, you don't want to include any grains, but if you have gone through that elimination process and started to add back in white rice, oatmeal, sometimes grits, grits or corn, so that's a little um, trickier for some people. Um, but uh, gluten-free oats tend to be one of those grains that are well tolerated, so these might be a treat that you can have once you've done that, um, that work of eliminating and, and adding back in. This is a great recipe. They're delicious, they are rich, they are um, flavorful, You, they last a long time. So they will hold you through the season. A little bit goes a long way. They're perfect to share or take places um, to share. And it's just a great recipe. I hope you love them. Thank you to my grandma. I'm not sure where she got it from. And then for my mom for carrying on the tradition and passing it along to me. All right, that's it for today, everybody. I hope you are having a great one, and I'll see you next time.